Praise and thanks belongs to Allah and may peace and blessings be upon his noble messenger, the Prophet Muhammad. Guys, how are you doing? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May peace and blessings be upon all of you. So I know you guys must have seen uh, Lindsay Lohan, the picture of her. She's walking around, you know, into the, in, 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 into the school or wherever it is that she's going. And she's got a translation of the Quran, which is the spoken word of Allah, the creator of the heavens and the earth. Um, in accordance to the Islamic religion. Um, and uh, basically, I've seen on Lindsay Lohan's Instagram over the past few months that she put up quite a few quotes from the Quran and little things here and there. Um, and now we see that she's actually got a translation of the Quran. So what I wanted to do was, Lindsay, and I just want to talk to you directly, um, is give you a bit of a taster of what this Quran has. The reason for that is because, Lindsay, you see, the Quran is a book that was revealed to us in the Arabic language. And that is a language which is extremely rich, which cannot be translated, especially with the eloquence of the creator of the heavens and the earth, it cannot be translated in a way where it can be done justice reading in the translation alone. So I wanted to give you a bit, a, bit, a summary from the very beginning of this book so you can kind of have an appreciation for what the Quran really is. Lindsay, I want to take you to the very first page of the Quran. Right in the middle of the first chapter, which is only seven verses, Allah he teaches us something. He tells us that we should ask him for guidance. Now this is very interesting because Lindsay, why on earth have you come to the Quran in the first place? Why have you been looking into Buddhism before and the Jewish scriptures before? For guidance, right? For some kind of spiritual fulfillment and understanding of this world and you know, guidance. And the Qur'an is telling you, hey, we're not here to play around. From the very first page, Allah appreciates exactly why you came to this book for guidance. And He tells you, if you really want it, ask for it. Ask Him directly. And what's amazing is that in the very next page, Allah he responds to your request. The very next page, on the very first line, Allah tells you this is the book in which there is no doubt a guidance for those that want to earn the pleasure of Allah, are conscious of Him and want to protect themselves from His displeasure. What did you ask for on the previous page? Guidance. The very next page, Allah tells you the guidance is in this book. Guess what? He says there is no doubt. In this book there is no doubt a guidance. Lindsay, have you ever read a book that starts like that? Usually when you open up a book, it starts off with apologies for any mistakes and shortcomings that may occur in the book. The author says, you know, I apologize in advance. I know, you know, I tried to get this as best as I could and blah, blah, blah. But Allah starts off with confidence. There's no doubt. He's letting you know you came to the right place. But for you to appreciate that guidance and really take it in, it's not for everyone to take it. It's for those who are conscious and sincere. So now that we know that this is a book of guidance, I want to take you just turn over the page, the very next page. I'm going to give you in summary what the message of this entire book is. Firstly, Allah he gives you a command. Ya Rabbakum. Allah says, oh people, mankind, all of you human beings, listen up. Worship your master. Serve him alone. Worship him with no one else. He called you his master. Now, a person might be thinking to themselves, hold up. Who said you're my master? You're telling me to worship you because you're my master? Who said? What's the proof? The very next part of the verse. The proof. You want the proof? I'm your master, Allah says. Because Lindsay, I created you. No, you, you say to yourself, people might say to themselves, you didn't create me. My mom and dad created me. And their dads, and then their parents, and their parents. That's what people say, right? Allah continues. He's like, I'm not finished. I didn't just create you. Your dad, his dad, mom, dad. All the way back to the first human being. All the way back to that first cell. That they couldn't explain where it came from, even from the evolutionary perspective, even if you take that perspective. Allah said, even that first cell, where did it come from? But we believe in the first human being, Adam. Allah says, him. And I created them. 
So your mum, your dad, all of them, I created them too. So that's the proof. If he created you, he created your whole lineage. He created the whole of humanity. He owns us. And that's why we should worship him. Why though? What's in it for us? Why else should we worship him? Okay, you created me, but what's the benefit to me? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ He answers at the end of the verse. He says, so that you may be people who protect themselves. Protection from what? It's going to come later on, don't worry. But the reason why we worship him, what's in it for us is that we earn protection. And that's going to come in a second. In the next verse, Allah proceeds to give you even more evidences. He wants you to think and ponder and really engage with him because the Quran is like that. It's a very engaging book. Not only did he create you, he didn't just leave you with absolute nothingness. He accommodated you and gave you the best of the best. Allah says, you see this entire world, this earth, I laid it out for you. The same way when you take a carpet, you roll it out for someone. Like, you know, when you walk in a red carpet, it rolls it out for you. So you can feel honorable. You can feel like you're special. Allah said, this entire earth, I rolled it out for you like a carpet. In this sky, I constructed it for you as a ceiling. Lindsay, have you ever seen a ceiling that remains standing with no pillars, no walls holding it up? Look up at the sky. What holds it up? And it's a ceiling that protects you. Protects you from many things. Even the rays of the sun, if they were to penetrate through without the sky protecting us as it does, we would not be able to go out in the sun and enjoy this beautiful world in which we live. So Allah tells you, I created for you this perfect world in which you can live. This, I made it submissive, the earth, you can build on it, walk on it. The sky, you can walk underneath this roof, it protects you. But He also made Jupiter, Neptune, Pluto, Mercury, Venus, Mars. He made other planets to have an earth and a sky as well. The only planet on which there is human life happens to be the planet Earth. Why? Because he gave this planet specifically for us one extra thing that he never gave anyone else. You see the sky which he constructed? From it he sent down the very essence of our survival. The very essence of human life. Water. And when that water came down into the earth, فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ What came out of the earth as a result of that water coming down, fruits and crops and vegetation, that was a provision for you and me to survive. Lindsay, then Allah says to you, فَلَا تَجَعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُوا if this is the case, He's your Creator and gave you all these things, then don't worship and obey other things beside Him. He gave you all these things in return. You owe it to Him to at least be grateful. So don't set up false gods beside Him. You don't need to go to any other religions and worship any other deities. Whether they be things that you take as religious things of worship, consciously or unconsciously. Because sometimes we worship our occupations, our jobs, our loved ones, our careers, our families. Because anything that you put as a central focus of your pleasure and obedience in your life happens to be that thing which you take as your God, whether you know it or not. So your spouse, your partner, your child, your family, your work could be your God if it is the most important thing to you in your life, the thing to which you obey. Allah says, don't set up these things besides Allah as gods. It's very clear to you. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says, and you know very well, Lindsay, everything that I'm saying is true. Allah tells you at the end. He said, you don't even need to say it. Let's not be around the bush. It's clear. You know it. I know it. Everyone knows it. وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ He is your creator. And he needs to be worshipped. But then Allah says, you know what? Just in case you still doubt. وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ أَبْدِنَا You see this very book that you're holding in your hand? وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا if you have doubt in this book still that was sent down upon the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him Then Allah says, 
Allah says, you know what you do? Here's how you clear your doubt. Allah gives you a test. A final falsification test. That cannot be escaped. All you have to do in order to disprove this book, to accommodate your doubt to be truthful, is produce one single chapter like the Qur'an. Why? Because the speech of Allah should be unmatchable. The same way His creation is unmatchable. Can we create the sky? I mean, the closest thing we create to the sky is a ceiling. That sky, it, it, it's held up with no pillars, no walls. We need walls and pillars to hold up our ceiling. I mean, the sun is a source of light. The closest thing we create to that in terms of a source of light is a light bulb. You can see the inferiority between his creation, our cre- in, in between our. Cre- you can see the inferiority of our creation in light of his creation. The same way there is an inferiority with the human speech in light of his speech. So, if this really is the speech of Allah, then we as human beings shouldn't be able to match it. But if you're saying it's not Allah's speech and it's the speech of a human being, then another human being should be able to match it, right? Because if it's inimitable, that means it's outside of the capacity of the natural world, that means it's a miracle. Because a miracle is outside of the capacity of the natural world. Now I want to refer you to a video where I discuss this specifically about why the Quran is unmatchable by human beings. And you can watch that right here. It's a very interesting video. But just to give you a taster, I mean you have Western academics, not from the Muslim lands, who study the Quran and they verify this. For example, Professor Bruce Lawrence, who explained Quranic verses are signs. They have an inexhaustible, tangible truth laid with meaning upon meaning, light upon light, miracle upon miracle. You have Hamilton Gibbs, who said, let the people accept the Quran as something that is a miracle, unmatchable by the human beings. Arthur J. Arbery, these are people who gave their life, not from the Muslim lands. They studied the Quran from an academic Western perspective and they testified to the fact that the Quran is a miracle. It's not something that human beings can come up with. And Allah tells you that if you do doubt, I want to challenge him, and you're truthful, then bring forth those that will stand as a witness and tell you that this is better or similar to Allah's book. But Allah warns the person just before they embark upon challenging their master. Allah reminds you of the failure of mankind up until now. 1430 plus years, this challenge has not been met. And guess what? It won't be met. Then Allah gives you one final warning. Remember, Allah said, protect yourself. Here's what you protect yourself from. The fire. It's fuel. It's men in stones. Prepared for those who disbelieved. But Lindsay, we have high hopes for you. This is not talking to you. It's a warning for those who disbelieve and have an insincerity in their heart. For you, the next verse, inshallah, God willing. Congratulate, Allah tells us, congratulate those who believe and did righteous actions. Congratulate them with what? Jannatin tajri min tahti hal anhar. I'm going to tell you what that means in a second. But the congratulations that is coming is to the person who believed and did righteous actions. Now pause. Many people in the world do righteous actions like you. You know, you want to change and impact the life of these children as you mentioned on Twitter, right? Awesome! But guess what? Lindsay, there's a prerequisite to those actions being accepted. Those righteous actions are actions that are fulfilling the rights of the people. But what about the rights of your master? That's why Allah said, آمنوا وعملوا صالحات Believe in him and then do righteous actions. Believe in him and then after that he mentioned righteous actions. So if one doesn't believe in Allah, the one who created him and sent this book down and his prophet, then his or her actions have no basis because the greatest good is to know the one who created you at the very least. Because before these kids or anyone in the world deserves you to be good to them, the one who created you deserves you to be grateful to him. And if you can't be grateful to the one who is most deserving of your gratitude, then... Your gratitude, a person's gratitude in that situation is basis. So what is this congratulations for? 
is for an abode in paradise. Garden. Jannatin tajri min tahtihi tahti al anhar. Gardens. Now, where are these gardens? In another part of the Quran, Allah said, Jannatin aliyah. They're very high gardens. Why? Because we know that the best kind of real estate is the one with the best view. Houses on the hills are the ones that are the most prestigious and the most expensive. So Allah is trying to tell you, your gardens are high, your gardens are on a hill. And guess what? Underneath them rivers flow, meaning you have waterfalls coming out of your very own garden. And they're right beneath you, so it's like you have a glass floor from which you can see the ground upon which you walk in your house. You will see the waterfall flowing off this massive beautiful hill that you own. And that's not it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا and they will be given food min tamaratin rizqan they will be fed with fruits and then they will say when they see these amazing fruits qalu hadha alladhi min hadha alladhi ruzqna min qabl when they look at these amazing fruits they're going to say hold up hold up hold up i know what this is apples and grapes and pomegranates and kiwis and melons and pineapples they can say yo i know this we used to eat this back in the day but then Allah tells you, It looks similar, but it's not. Take a bite, and you'll see the difference. This is food in paradise. It's on a different level. But And inside it, you're going to have spouses, partners, lovers. Pure, loyal to you. They'll never cheat on you. Never let you down. And you'll love everything about them. Now, as you're there, you've got these amazing fruits, this amazing real estate, this amazing lover in your life, handsome, beautiful, everything, perfect. At that moment, you know when you look at the one that you love and you're like, you know, I wish things could always be like this. And you get to that point where, you know, you feel like at any moment, hardship and tragedy and struggle is about to come your way. Because you know when things get good, suddenly you know. They're about to be bad, ups and downs, smiles and frowns. That's what life is like, it's a roller coaster. So, just as you're at this height of ecstasy, Allah reminds you, Wahum fiha khalidun. Lindsay, this happiness is never going to end. You're going to stay here for eternity, enjoying your life in absolute ecstasy. Lindsay, that was my summary to you of the Quran. And I hope that I have introduced the book to you. And I call you, please, sincerely. I don't get paid for this. No Facebook ads or nothing on my channel. I do this only to communicate a sincere message. Is negate any deities and false gods that you may worship and affirm the worship of only the one true God worthy to be worshipped in truth, Allah. And affirm the prophethood and the messengership of his greatest slave, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. And you're on your way to guaranteeing your place in paradise. I hear that you live in London. I'm from London too. If there's any way we can help you, put you in touch with anyone, feel free to get in touch. I request everyone who's watching this video to please tweet this video to Lindsay at her Twitter and show her words of love and support. And I hope that Allah opens up her heart and guides her to Islam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.